hey, these five tips I'm gonna give you in this video are gonna help you make your resource loading in Primavera P6 easier to do. You're gonna be able to analyze your resources on your schedules. These are the best tips that I've learned in my 15 years as a trainer and a scheduler using Primavera P6. I don't know if you're resource loading your projects yet. If you're not, you should be, and you should be using these tips. And if you are already using resources in P6, I'm gonna give you some additional tips that are gonna help you make your life a whole lot easier. If you're ready, let's go. Number one is resource load the easy way. That's right. There's some buttons and some tools in Primavera P6 that most of us are skipping over. We're going one at a time and I'll show you that. Now, if you've never resource loaded a project before, you might be intimidated. What should I be adding? Should I be adding operators? Should I be adding materials? Hey, let's just put in our crews. That's the most important piece. We wanna put in our crews and we wanna analyze what our crew usage is. So focus on that. So how do I use these tips? What are these buttons I'm talking about? Okay, let's have a look. We can use the add resource button down here in the resources tab underneath each activity. But check it out, what if I wanna add a crew to all of these activities? Well, I can highlight and I can use these buttons on the right to quickly add my excavation crew and to get it added to every activity. Look at this. If I wanna swap out the excavation crew over here, same button in this same little guy, there's a swap button. Use the swap button, swap out excavation crew for the pipe crew. The swap is done. Use these buttons, they're gonna make your life a whole lot easier and let your resource loading happen so much faster. Number two, crews, not individuals. When we're putting our resources into P6, when we're setting things up for resource loading in our dictionary, put in your crews, don't put in individuals. And in fact, make sure you name your resources with an appropriate crew name. For example, not welder, but welding crew. That can be a really important indicator that it's not an individual, but that it's crews. So look how I've done it here. I've got my excavation crew, my tunneling crew. Also down here have welder. I don't want to have welder. I want to have welding crew, okay? So set up excavation crew like this. Now this is important, especially when we get to units and prices, because units and prices have this field that's called max units per time, which indicates how many resources you have. This is your productive capability, and it's usually in hours per day. You might have to turn the units on here. So if I have 40 hours per day for an excavation crew, it means I have one crew. That crew can execute 40 hours in a day. If I have multiple crews, I'll increase that number. That's why you set up crews. Don't set up individuals because you don't wanna have this max units per time to be a huge number representing all the different people you have. Keep it simple, it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Number three, focus on important resourcing data, ignore the noise. Again, P6 has got so much noise. What is noise? Extra fields, all this stuff that we don't need at all. Have a look at my screen down here on the resources tab I have, primary resource. We don't care about that field. We have remaining units per time. That's not a primary field we focus on. We have a lag, start, finish. We don't care about any of that stuff, including role. Those are not the fields that are gonna help you make your resourcing easy, effective, and simple. Let's get focused on the fields that are important. I teach this stuff in my Primavera P6 Foundations course, a course that goes deeper in resourcing. If you're interested in that, check it out but we talk about what fields are essential for resourcing and I teach you how to build a series of layouts. And these are layouts that you can use over and over and over. In fact, they're layouts you might use for your entire P6 career. I teach those in that course and I'm gonna give you some of the tidbits right here. Here are the fields that we care about. Let's start with resource ID name. We wanna have the ID and the name. So use that one, not just resource name. Late resource type. This is optional if you're using different types of resources, labor, non-labor. I like it, so I use it. I really recommend you create a user-defined field that you can use on the resourcing tab called notes. You can leave notes in here. The most important fields are these three. Original duration, gotta have that here. Budgeted units per time, super important. Indicates how many resources you have assigned to this activity. 
budgeted units, that's your man hours, actual units if you're going to progress, remaining units if you're going to progress, and if you're interested in cost at all, you'll also include price per unit and budgeted cost. Set these up, save the layout, use this over and over and over. I set up this layout at all of my projects and you should too. Number four, know how P6 resource data is calculated. You need to know this equation. Original duration times budgeted units per time equals budgeted units. This is the core equation for resourcing. You need to know that the duration times the number of crews that I have assigned equals my total man hours. If you don't understand this equation, it's going to mess up all of your resourcing. You need to know that this equation is, stays put. This is also affected by fields like duration type. And as you're adding and removing additional resources, you want to monitor that this equation is always being calculated the way you want it to. So focus there on that equation and make sure you know how the P6 data flows. Number five is calendars are king in Primavera P6. That's right. If you want all this to work, you need to be meticulous with your calendars. Don't use personal or crew calendars. What are those? Okay, so let's go back to our resource dictionary and you'll notice on this details tab for any resource, there is a profile area and a calendar that can be assigned. I highly recommend if you want to keep this simple and straightforward and not complicate your life, you assign a global calendar. It should be the same global calendar you are using on the project. If you're using a project calendar, copy it to a global calendar and assign it here. Do not create personal calendars. Why? Personal calendars on resources will affect all sorts of things. Your activities will still be scheduled properly according to the activity calendar. But when you get to looking at graphs, which we're super interested in doing using the resource usage profile, your graphs will be affected by any personal calendars. And if they do not match the way that the activity calendar is set up, you're going to be in a world of pain and confusion. Calendars are king in Primavera P6. Make sure that they are consistent, assigned to your resources, as well as assigned the same calendars assigned to your activities. I hope you learned something here. If you did, let me know, leave me a comment, like this video, subscribe to the channel to get our videos in your notifications list. And don't forget to check out our courses. You will go from newbie to master with our online courses at planacademy.com. Or check out this video here. Is that it? Or do you want something else? Hello?